struggle, friendship, love, and, and all other things which happens in the life. So Madam President, Madam Toastmaster, and my fellow Toastmasters, today I'm going to take you to the similar kind of journey. Though this speech is uh, very short, like five to seven minutes, this speech would work as a prequel to the journey maybe. So let's start with this journey and stay tuned if you want to hear the sequel of this journey. So there was a boy of like 21 years old. I don't know if you still call 21 years old a boy, but <laughs> he was definitely a mama's boy at the age of 21 years old. He spent entire his life in an eco-capital town of India, which is Mumbai. It's a small town, it's crowded like New York, and everything was in that town. His birth, his education, his first job, his struggle, everything. Some of these things happened in the flow on its own. But for some things, he made sure that things will happen in a way that he would still stay in Mumbai. But as Bobby said, and as I have told him, that there are times where God, fate, nature, whatever you want to call, it works in a very mysterious way, where you don't have control over it. You just, you just don't know what's going on and how your life is suddenly taking a turn. And that's what happened. And this boy is nothing but me. So in 2011, I finished up my engineering in electronics and telecommunication and there was a gap before I joined my first job which I appeared and I made sure that organization is in Mumbai so that I would be in Mumbai and I started teaching and I was teaching while doing my engineering as well I was teaching physics and mathematics and I was very passionate about it so I, I made my mind that I want to become a professor but my father wanted me to do job. At least he was saying that I should be able to tell some people that, okay, my, my son is an engineer and he's working in XYZ company. So I thought, okay, yeah, let's, let's do this. So I went to my first job. There was a two-year contract. So there was a service bond. If I, if I leave in between, I had to pay $3,000. So I thought, okay, yeah, let's, let's bear these two years. So I started working there and while working in the job, I was parallelly teaching physics and mathematics in my spare hours. So my sh schedule was set. Three hours of total traveling of the day between jobs, uh, teaching, coaching institute, eight hours of IT job and three hours of lectures. So 14 hours, I was super mental like Jonathan. This is, this is like double, <laughs> literally it is double. And 2013 came and I was so excited. Finally, these two years are coming to the end. Not that I'm not interested in IT, but I was more inclined towards teaching. So I thought, okay, yeah. 2013, October came, November came, and then I was having my one-on-one -on -one with my manager. And I, I gave him a little hint that, you know what, maybe in a month, I'll, I'll put down a paper and I'll resign. And he immediately reacted, he said, Atul, no, 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 don't do that. Uh, you know what, because we are having a plan to send you on site to work at a client location in the United States. And then I asked this question to myself, what? No. No offense <laughs> to any managers, but I thought that, okay, it's their job to, you know, retain the employer and they're just saying it because they want to retain me. I said, yeah. okay, I just nodded to him and said, yeah, I left the conference room and I was very determined. And I made the deal with my father that, okay, yeah, these are the only two years I'll be working as an engineer. But all of a sudden, 9th January 2014, I received an email from the HR that you have been nominated for on-site opportunity, please submit the documents in the system. And I was shocked, I was surprised. I said, okay, what's going on? I don't know. Because there were two candidates which was senior to me and I thought that, okay, why they're not sending them? 
then I came to know that one left the organization, one is uh, one has changed the team, so they they are not applicable or they are not eligible. I spent five days answering those multiple questions which are going in my head, and then finally decided, okay, yeah, let's let's take a chance, let's go. It would be a whole new experience, new culture, everything. It would be an adventurous journey. But okay, yeah, let's not you know, bump up slowly, step by step. On 14th of January, I realized I don't have the passport. <laughs> but come on, guys. This guy was not having anything on his radar for going to United States or out of the guy who has not traveled the neighbor city. Forget about the country. <laughs> And he is so bad at geography that first, when I came to know that I'm going to the United States, I misinterpreted. I was considering Mexico as Canada, Canada as Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Stanford City, and that city, I got confused with the Stanford, with the N. And everybody was asking, you're, you're going to Stanford, where the university is there? I said, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> because seriously, I'm terrible at geography. So there was a lot of struggle between that period to get a passport, to submit a document. I got uh, my timeline extended to submit a document that I still don't have the passport. Could you please extend the timeline? Then there was a lottery system because many people apply for the H-1B visa and only 65,000 people gets to draw out of those pool. And there were, at my time, I guess there were one lakh, uh, I don't know, it's, it's 175,000 people were there. And out of that, 65,000 got selected, and I was one of that. So I am really happy here after I landed up uh, into the land of opportunity, which I came to know after I visited the Statue of Liberty. Until that, I was not knowing that United States is called as the land of opportunity. So that's me here, and hopefully to spend the rest of my life working hard and having new experiences throughout my life. Thank you. Thank you.